Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com, and I'm here to answer all your questions about how to formulate cold processed soap recipes. We asked Instagram, what are your most common recipe questions for cold processed soap? And I have a list of them here, and I'm gonna go through and answer as many of them as I can. I hope you learned something. So, three wild oils asked, how to make soaps harder? I'm sometimes using sodium lactate, but I'm not really happy with the results. I'm sometimes using stearic acid up to 0.5%, and I'm sometimes using hard oils 60 to 65%, and I still want soaps to be harder, and, oh, this is interesting, want to prevent my sink from soap scum. My soap leaves a soap scum. What is the best oil butter proportion? Well, you have asked the holy grail of soap making questions, right? This is definitely a personal preference thing. So when I want my soap to be harder, I always, one, use a large percentage of hard oils, like you're saying, you're using up to 60, 65%. You can go all the way up to 75%. Make sure that last 25% though is a, is a fairly nourishing oil, like say a really beautiful pure olive oil. If you use olive oil pumice, which is the cheaper grade of olive oil, that does make a harder bar of soap as well. Sodium lactate in every single recipe, absolutely. Decrease your super fat all the way down to two to 3%. If your number one concern is a hard bar, super fat is not your friend. And don't forget, cold process soap is perfectly balanced at a 0% super fat. So that one or two or 3% extra oil in the bar is just there to help nourish the skin and leave a little bit of beautiful oil on your skin which goes directly to your question about soap scum. Soap scum commonly happens with hard water. And that is because the minerals in the hard water bind with the oils in the soap and cause soap scum. And so if you don't want any soap scum from your, your, in your soap, from your soap, you can do a lower super fat, too, you might want to consider a water softener in your water because if it's doing that to your soap, think about what it's doing to your hair. Yikes. It's probably coating your hair just a little bit. And then you ask what the perfect proportion of butters and oils is. And honestly, when I make my stuff, I like to do like a 33% coconut, 33% palm, and then a 33% mixture of lots of nourishing stuff. So whether that's olive oil, sweet almond oil, shea butter, and the like, I tend to do that 33% play wiggle room in there, but I like a harder bar of soap. One thing to remember is all those butters, that mango butter, that cocoa butter, the shea butter, all of those are going to accelerate trace and create a harder bar as well. So Bathmatics 101, I love that handle by the way, asks what is the most important property you consider when deciding which oils to use during your recipe formulations? Is it better to work backwards by deciding what you want to use the bar for before choosing any oils? That is a fantastic question. When I was writing this book, I designed it by the actual final product. So like this recipe, for example, I'd be like, okay, I wanna do a checkerboard pattern. And then I would work backwards from there and say, okay, if I want a checkerboard pattern, I need my, my soap to set up fairly quickly, but I needed it to stay kind of fluid so it pours in a perfect straight line. And so I did formulate backwards based on what I wanted my design to be and based, I wanted, based on what I wanted that final bar to look like. For me, when I'm formulating the design is very, very important then followed by the qualities and so I'm usually using design when I'm thinking about my recipes and so I do formulate backwards absolutely so Nandi Jari at Jahari asks is there a hundred percent way to avoid soda ash yes and no so soda ash forms when the unreacted lye or sodium hydroxide reacts with the carbon dioxide in the air so first of all, having the soap have, the fresh soap have access to the air is one of the reasons that soda ash happens. A, a couple other reasons soda ash can happen. Temperatures can be too cool. I notice I'm more prone to soda ash when my trace is really thin. And also I've noticed, so in the winter months when the temperature fluctuates a lot, I'm noticing a lot more soda ash. So preventing the soap from getting to the air is one of the keys. So if you don't have a, if you don't, have any sort of design on top, you can always just put saran wrap down on the top and that usually will do it. Two, thickening your trace will really help. Three, increasing the water discount will really help. So decreasing the amount of water you're using in your soap. Four, sodium lactate will help. Five, 0.5% 5 .5 beeswax in the actual soap will help that as well. Six, spraying with 99% rubbing alcohol every 30 minutes for a couple hours after you make your soap. Uh, seven, gelling the soap, making sure you're putting on a heat pad and gelling it. All of those things will help to pre prevent soda ash. And we do a lot of them at the same time here at Brambleberry to try and get our recipes to turn out perfectly every single time.
Sometimes they don't though. And when that happens, there are a few ways that you can get the soda ash off the top of your soap. One, you can use a steamer, like a clothing steamer, to actually just kind of rinse it away gently. This leaves the soap really glossy, which is nice. Two, you can use pantyhose to just kind of rub it off. It's a nice gentle exfoliation. And then three, Brambleberry has this really awesome um, soap shaver thing, and you can just run your entire bar down the soap shaver, and it'll take off the whole first layer of that soap, which will take off the really bad looking kind of soap, or the soap that is unattractive. Now remember, there's nothing wrong with soda ash. Totally fine to use, totally fine to soap. It's just not as pretty as you want it to be, so I get wanting to A, avoid it, and B, if you get it, get rid of it. Okay, Art Savan asks, what are your tips for making a long lasting bar without using palm oil or animal fat? I am glad you asked this question because palm oil is a really controversial topic in the soap making industry because palm oil comes from areas where the endangered orangutans often are. Now Brambleberry uses round table sustainable palm oil, but if you don't wanna use it and you don't wanna use animal tallow, how do you get a hard bar of soap? Couple of things. First of all, a third of the recipes in my book, they're palm free. So pick up a copy of the book if you haven't already picked it up. Uh, two, you can always make sure that you're upping your amount of butters. So your shea butter, your mango butter, those really actually act a lot like palm oil in the soap. Um, using olive oil pumice instead of pure olive oil will help with the hardness of the bar. Doing uh, lots of coconut oil will also help with the hardness of the bar. Decreasing your super fat is a huge thing for helping with the hardness of the bar. And super fat, remember, is not necessary when you are soap making. Super fat is the extra oil that is left on top of a perfectly formulated bar. 0% super fat bars are still better for you than store-bought, kind of more traditional detergent-based soap bars. So if you just have a 1% to 2% super fat, that will also make a, a much harder bar than, say, a 5 or 6% super fat. So those are all some tips on how to get a really hard bar without using animal products and without using palm oil. Vivian Ito would like to know how to make facial soap and she wants to know if it's different than cold process soap. So this is such an interesting question. And if you ask 10 different soapers, you're gonna get 10 different answers, right? Because my face is different than your face, which is different than her face, right? I obviously have maturing skin, and so I'm gonna want a pretty luxurious bar on my face. But someone who is struggling with acne is going to want a much different, higher cleansing, higher anti-astringent kind of bar on their face. So if you're making a facial bar, first consider what's the market you're trying to market this to? Are you trying to sell it to? If you are in business, I would really recommend having a couple different kind of facial bars. Like we have a wonderful recipe at soapqueen.com that's a tea tree facial oil bar that is fantastic for someone that has more acne prone skin. But if you're like me and you're formulating for, say again, my face, which I, I really want anti-aging. I want something that helps with mature skin. I'm using carrot seed essential oil, tamanu oil. I'm using luxurious butters. I'm doing a pretty high super fat in my facial bar. So the answer is, is a facial bar recipe isn't really different than a soap bar recipe in the sense that you are formulating for your final end use. So the choice of essential oils is gonna be really important. The choice of the butters you use is gonna be really important and the choice of super fat you use. Again, mature skin, ah, go up to 10% super fat, absolutely. After all, people that are aging, we usually just go ahead and slather our face with oil anyways in the form of moisturizers after we've washed our face. But a young teenager that's struggling with on the onset of acne, they're really not gonna want a 10% super fat. They're gonna want like a 1% super fat and then they're gonna follow that up with a toner. So to answer your question, it's really very much a personal preference and you're gonna have so much fun experimenting with this and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. I guarantee you, you're gonna be so popular with your friends and family as you hand out bars for people to try and give you feedback on. Untarnished Talons is asking for help with oils that give slow moving recipes. I struggle with quick tracing all the time. So before we talk about those oils that might help you with slow moving tracing, let's talk about your stick blender technique. So in my experience, when you get quick tracing, yeah, it could be the oils, absolutely. And it could just be because the stick blending needs to be a little more gentle, a little more subtle. Um, what I like to do when I stick blend is I like to turn on the stick blender for a good uh, 10 to 15 seconds and then I turn it off and I literally will just take the stick blender and kind of use it like a, a spoon and kind of swirl everything around. Then I'll turn it off for another 10 to 15 seconds 
turn it off, turn it off for another 10 to 15 seconds. And for this book, we timed everything to see how long it would take for the recipes to actually get to the trace desired. It was shockingly short, like under a minute for many of the recipes to get to the correct trace. So first of all, be looking at your trace and be thinking and, and your stick blending and just be thinking, okay, have we emulsified? Okay, we've emulsified. Do I need to go any further? Yeah. And be really uh, gentle and conscientious with how you're using that stick blender. So beyond that though, no butters. If you don't want trace to happen quickly, don't put any butters in. No shea butter, no mango butter, no cocoa butter. Um, don't do any of the don't do any of those butters. Uh, two, use pure olive oil, not olive oil pumice. Three, decrease those hard oils. So anything that's hard in the bag or or however it comes to you, like a palm oil or a coconut oil, those are going to naturally be much more fast to trace. So use less amounts of those. So like, for example, the quick swirl mix that Brambleberry has for the, the swirling mix, that one has a higher percentage of liquid oils. Are they gonna stay liquid and be able to move in a flowy and gorgeous fashion longer to get you some really complicated designs? All right, I'm gonna get this wrong, I'm very sorry. Uh, it's Dana Marich, Dana Marich, hi Dana. I uh, asked, the hardest thing for me is in substituting oils. What do you recommend? So I wanna have a really easy answer for you because, well, I wanna make you happy. Uh, but generally, when you are substituting oils, and this happens to every soap maker on the planet, right? You go to make your batch and you're like, oh wait, I'm out of this oil, what am I gonna do? First of all, that is why lye calculators exist. Definitely use the calculator at brambleberry.com to run all kinds of new recipes through whenever you need to substitute. But when you're kinda of like, yeah, but what do I even do? General rule of thumb. Substitute hard oil for hard oil, soft liquid oil for soft liquid oil, butter for butter. Often the price range will give you an indication too. So if, for example, you're out of chia seed oil and you're like, well, what am I going to do for chia seed oil? And you have olive oil, sweet almond oil, or lingonberry oil there. Which one are you going to choose? There are all three liquids. Go for the one that's closest in price. So you're going to go for the lingonberry oil. If, you have, if you're out of coconut oil and you're like, well, what am I going to do to substitute coconut oil? Coconut oil is really hard, right? That's your primary lathering agent. So you could look at it and go, well, I'm not gonna make soap today. Or you could just double the amount of palm oil you're gonna use. Or you could find some tallow and use that. Or you could even look at the shea butter you have and go, hmm, shea butter and coconut oil, like kind of look the same. Maybe I'll do palm oil and shea butter for my coconut oil. Because, right, be thinking about what that texture is and what that final quality is that, that the oil does in the recipe. So if the oil is there for moisturizing, again, that chia seed was there, that's there for moisturizing and nourishing. Find the most moisturizing and nourishing oil you have. If the oil is there for bar hardness, like say the palm oil, then find the other oils you have at home that are the most hard thing that you have that for the bar hardness. So you're looking at the form and function of the oil when you're thinking about substituting. So again, the form and function, so is it liquid, is it solid? What is it meant to do in the final bar? And then the last clue is that price point because often those more expensive oils, they're all kind of used for the same exact purpose in your bar of soap. I hope this helps out. Make sure to take advantage of the Brambleberry Lye Calculator. That's what it's there for. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked this video and you want me to answer more questions like this, post them down below and we'll do more of these videos. And you guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, can you do me a solid and subscribe? Just hit the subscribe button, please. And finally, you guys inspire me. I love to see what you create. I really like to see how you're using Brambleberry products. So when you guys are posting your creations to social media, hashtag them Bramble on so we can all get inspired by your creativity. Until next time, you guys, I can't wait to see your soap creations.